Hey everyone, I'm Todd along with Ronnie Heelan. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Paranomaly Podcast, your home for all things paranormal supernatural. Now coming up on this episode of Paranomaly, we're talking with Jill Weaver, who is the owner, founder of Simon's Paranormal. Now she is the former chief investigator with MUFON Indiana. She's co-developer of Spirit Story Box app for Apple. And there's so much more to this person. So grab yourself a drink and a snack, turn the lights off on the way back, find yourself a nice comfy spot, and enjoy this episode of Paranomaly. Stay with us, folks. All right. So how are you, Jill? I'm doing well. And yourself? I'm doing fine, thanks. Hey, tell me a little about yourself. Oh, um... Well, uh, <laughs> I've had uh, kind of an interesting life. I've sort of been a Jill of all trades. I've done a lot of different things in my life. Um, I started out uh, very devoted to science. I worked in the scientific field for 20 years. And then after that, uh, after I had my son, I started branching out and following things that more caught my interest and um, that's just kind of led me down some really interesting paths, both uh, professionally and, and hobby-wise with the paranormal. So what got you started into the paranormal? I've had strange things happen my whole life. I think, uh, I think that's pretty true of a lot of people that get into the paranormal. And then I also had a really healthy um, diet of reading all kinds of you know, 1960s, 1970s, you know, stranger than fiction, science right. fiction, you know, all the, you know, the fate magazines and just all, you know, all the crazy TV shows, all that stuff that um, just really kind of embedded itself in the psyche of, <laughs> of all of us older people. So it really, it really got you dragged in, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, 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 I was curious. I'm a, I'm a very curious person by nature. Um, that's how I got into science. That's how I got into the paranormal. And I'd experience these things, read these things, and then try to sort of dissect them for the truth. And a lot of things, they just sort of felt true. And then I would also have, you know, things that happened in my own life that I kind of couldn't explain. And so, you know, that led me to believe that there's there's more to the world than, you know, we can see, you know, feel under completely understand. I mean, you know, in the laboratory, you know, you're studying things that you need a microscope to see. And without the microscope, you just have to have faith that those enzymes, that DNA, all those things are doing the things that they're supposed to do deep inside of us. But we didn't know they were there until we had the microscope to examine that, you know, and other techniques, of course. So I kind of take that uh, approach to the paranormal is you know, I think there's people out there that do have some kind of natural ability in the human brain that maybe we all have, and theirs is just turned on from either, you know, birth or in the course of, you know, like a head trauma or an injury. Yeah. And so that really kind of fascinates me that, you know, maybe we just don't have the right sensory apparatus to detect these things. Right. No, I totally get that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like the example I would give, um, it, it fairly recently, you know, scientists, wildlife biologists always said, you know, elephants don't make any noise. We can't hear them. They don't make any noise. Well, that's not true. They just weren't listening at the right frequencies. They found out that elephants are very vocal. They just happen to be vocal at a frequency that is too low for the human ear to hear, just like with, with bats and, you know, and their, their sonar that they use. So it, you know, and when you understand, you know, how the whole electromagnetic spectrum works, we only just operate in such a small part of that. You know, even our cats and our dogs, you know, they are so far beyond us and being able to just experience kind of more of the world, you know, and what they can see and what they can hear, what mm -hmm. they can smell. And and that's kind of that's kind of the approach that I take at it is, you know, these things possibly exist, but just because we're not continuously aware of it we can't just completely dismiss it. Exactly. Right. And we, we've kind of been um, like when you start out as a child and then um, you believe more, you're, you're more open to everything. And then we kind of like um, <laughs> we get uh, schooled and then we kind of 
don't use them powers anymore. We don't use that belief that, you know, there's ghosts and spirits and things like that. Yeah, we're, we're, we teach our children that those things are foolish. And, you know, I've heard some really incredible things come out of the mouths of two and three year olds. You know, these completely innocent creatures who don't understand anything about war. Um, one of my friends, her son started talking about, you know, being shot. Oh, wow. And, and described very much, you know, what would be, you know, any type of a wartime experience. And she said, you know, they were completely, you know, nonviolent sort of people, you know, they didn't have guns, they didn't talk about war, they didn't talk about any of that kind of stuff in the household. And, you know, and he flat out said, well, you know, that was before I was here, mommy. That was, you know. Wow. Was, he was, was having a, a past ago. life memory. That's awesome. And they're, they're just so clear to children. They have these incredible past life memories, which, you know, I think they forget as, you know, so they get more entrenched in this life. Yeah. But, but then again, you know, we, we tell our kids, well, don't talk about that. Now, my son could see auras very clearly, um, started about age 12. And, you know, he used to tell me about it all the time. And I always encouraged it. And, um, and I, he may have actually started to have some more um, mediumistic uh, abilities. And, um, and that's not always pretty what you see, because he really kind of started to shut down after a while. And then, you know, pretty soon he said, no, I, I can't see those anymore. Yeah. That, yeah you so. know, that's, that's a big thing because you, once you tap into that first, people will be like, am I going crazy? What's going on? But once you figure out that that is what you, how do you shut it off? I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I have empath qualities, you know, but to be able to really dial in, I I don't know if I'd be able to handle that. And, and that's the thing is I think a lot of a, a lot of people don't understand that aspect of it. I mean, I have a very dear friend that's a medium and she said, I could teach you how to do it. She said, but I don't really understand why you would want this ability. You, you see horrible things. You see, you know, people, you know, they appear as, you know, when they passed, which can be really horrific. And she said, also, she will experience people going through things right before they died. Like um, she lived through an experience of what it felt like for someone who had jumped off a building and committed suicide. Oh, my God. You know, God. she felt that. And she said, you know, there's a few mediums out there that, you know, are, are really raking in the dough. And she said, other than that, you know, why would anyone want this ability? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, besides. So I, I think, when, yeah, I think when you have, if you have children that have those abilities, you, you need to get them to somebody who can properly train them so that they can, like, you have to be able to close off, but you have to be able to do it um, in a controlled fashion. Because I think a lot of people, I know a lot of intuitives, and a lot of intuitives drink. And it's because they don't know how to turn off properly what they're experiencing and they can't handle it. Right. So they self-medicate and they're pushed because they're trying to push that down. And when you push anything down, it's just going to come out in other ways, you know, chronic headaches, things like that. Sure. So, so that, that's just, you know, from me talking to other people that, you know, are intuitive or mediums, I said, you know, get properly trained. You know, you, you they learn this little thing where it's like zip up, zip down, zip up, zip down, you know, and, and you can kind of moderate, you know, what spirit is kind of throwing at you, I think. Right. You know, it's, it kind of reminds me of like uh, kids that are being uh, put into the paranormal world here and – People are a lot of people flip out because it's like a religious thing. You can't do that. You know what I mean? But I think it's great. I think if you because they already have that, they're already open to that. And I think, you know, if you teach them correctly, if you're a good mentor, uh, they can embrace that and really go with it. But I I don't know. A lot of people are just like, oh, you can't do that. That's, you know, (laughs) so. No, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think it's a natural ability. And I think any time a child shows a natural ability in anything, it should be encouraged. Right. Especially now. I mean, back in the in the 50s and the 40s, of course, you didn't talk about stuff like that. I mean, they didn't – nobody cared. They, in fact, you you had to pretty much – hide your kids if there was anything wrong with them or if they were in some kind of uh, institution or something. It was like taboo. Now it should be, everything should be embraced and open because uh, it's just, uh, times have changed. 
Well, I, you know, I, th- I think that's what you know, we've seen in so many communities is that when people can actually live as they were created to be, it makes for so much more happy people. You know, anybody who has any kind of talent or anything about themselves, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all about that. I think we really have to learn to embrace people's true identities and, and who they are and what they can do. I think that just makes for better members of society. But um, that's, I agree with that 100%. That's sometimes difficult to do, and, and still, even in today's world. Well, yeah, because if you're a little different, then you're going to get picked on or, or what have you, you know, and you're still going to think it's your fault <laughs> that there's something wrong with you when in actuality you have some kind of, you know, thing that God gave you when you was still in the womb, you well, know what I mean? It's like children with autism and um, Asperger's syndrome, you know, you got to lead them into what interests them and what they're good at and they will excel and sometimes better than that, an average person, you know, right. Right. You know, that's what I did. Oh, with they, my make, son, they make, they so. make, yeah, they make amazing, um, programmers. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Exactly. They can, they can, they can code like crazy because they, yeah, they just, they have that incredible ability to yeah. focus. They have brilliant minds. My son's got Asperger's syndrome. And he's so smart. Like he's smarter than I am and he's so good in the things that interest him and that he excels in. So I always try to lead him into, to those areas. Yeah. Which so would kind of, awesome. it would kind of be like if, if you don't understand, if let's say that child is really big into astrological things, but the parent has no clue what that is, of course, there's going to be like, well, you know, my kid's really crazy. And you know what I mean? That's when you want to nurture. So, yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah, I think anytime, you know, there's been an outlier, you know, that's come along, you know, they, they, they're a genius. And I, and I use that term, you know, all, there's all different types of genius. There's music genius, there's intellectual genius, there's math genius, you know, just that creativity, it can just come out in so many ways. And, and sometimes those people that we now, you know, fill our history books with, they were outliers. And, um, you know, it was probably, you know, much later in their lives that, you know, they were sort of recognized for, you know, the gift that they had. Sure. And, yeah, I think a lot of them were, were tormented. I, I truly think that, um, you know, when you talk about children like that, you know, it used to be the indigo children. And now I think they're calling them crystals. And, you know, a lot of them are the autistic and the, and the kids that are in the autism spectrum. They, they, that may actually be a part of our evolution that, you know, we need to embrace, yes. you know, to move, to move forward. Exactly. I agree 100%. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So what, what else has been happening? Oh, with um, me? Well, I, um, I've been on the road. I've become a solo traveler. Um, I sold my house and I've gone semi nomadic. I, I check in every once in a while. Um <laughs> I'm thinking about, I'm kind of, you know, playing with the whole idea of doing the whole, you know, complete nomadic uh, van life. So there I've been sort of go. dipping my toe wow. in that and uh, <laughs> and trying to see, you know, if that's something that um, I could do. I, I'm a Sagittarius. I've always, I've always loved to travel. I'm always, you know, galloping for that that far horizon. And, um, and so I've just been, you know, trying to really focus on going to historical places. I'm, I'm really into history. I love the history of a place, but then I also love the paranormal aspect that, that sort of comes out of the history yeah. of, of the place. Right. Um, Me too. You're living a dream, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I love it. This is, yeah. I would yeah. love to do that. <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about Simines. How did this, how did this paranormal group come to be? Okay. So, um, so Psy Minds used to be Scientific Minds Paranormal Investigators. Um, I think I think that started, I want to say around 2010. Um, at the time, I, uh, I'd been working as a real estate agent, and I, I started having even more paranormal experiences. Once I was into so many houses, I guess, you know, all of us, you know, we, you know, we live a few places during our lives. But when you're a real estate agent, you get in an awful lot of houses, and um, this was in Indiana foreclosure crisis. You know, there were a lot of houses that had been sitting vacant. And I think that's just kind of really ripe for ramping up any kind of, you know, paranormal activity. 
And, um, and I just started running into all these haunted houses. Um, things would happen like there was um, my very first listing. We had these electronic lock boxes. And it it was it was a stigmatized property. Um, it had had you know some bad things happen there. It um, my client had bought it out of foreclosure and had fixed it up. And uh, so anyway, he got it all fixed up, and I listed it. And I got a call the next day, and he said, "Your lockbox is on the ground." And I said, "What do you mean my lockbox is on the ground? I had locked it through this uh, wrought iron security door." So I go over there, and my lockbox was. Sure enough, it was laying on the ground. And um, and I, I talked to my manager. I talked to the, the board of realtors. I said, how do these lockboxes detach? And they said, well, you must have used your shackle code. And I said, I'm a new agent. I don't even know what my shackle code is. <laughs> and uh, so it was this weird kind of electronic thing. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Well, when I was taking my pictures in the house, I kept getting these weird shapes in all my photos. And this is even, you know, this is when you had it now taking them with your phone this is when you're taking it with your digital camera and um i kept getting these like large black shapes that were everywhere in the house it was really ruining my pictures and uh so i started running into more and more situations like that um i listed another house that was a friend of mine and her husband had passed and she had moved out and i I could not take photos in the house. My camera would just not function. Wow. And then finally, um, I kind of realized what was going on. And I said, you know, Mr. Adams, if you're still here, you know, clearly no one has told you what the heck's going on. I said, you know, Rose is in an assisted living place. You know, she's fine. You know, the kids are visiting her. Everything is fine. You know, we're, we're, I'm here to, you know, help sell this house. And that's going to provide the money to take care of, of her for the rest of her life. And then after I kind of let him know what was going on, you know, my, my camera worked fine after that. So about this time, um, I had gotten more of an interest in the paranormal and, you know, watching, you know, ghost hunters and all the ghost shows. And, uh, I joined my first paranormal team. I actually joined, uh, everyday paranormal, which was a nationwide team, uh, broken down by state that the Kling brothers had started. Um, they were of ghost lab fame. Oh, okay. And I was crazy about that. I was crazy about their show because um, it's Brad and Barry. Uh, one of them was um, a programmer. He would write these really awesome IT programs for kind of analyzing uh, like EVPs and just different um, kind of syncing all the, the stuff that was happening in a location. Yeah. Uh, so I was with them for a little while. And then um, – I felt like the team, the group of people that I was with were not really as scientifically minded as, as perhaps, you know, the, the Kling brothers would sort of, you know, kind of led me to believe that they would be. And, um, and so then I said, well, I want to try to kick this up a little bit more. And then I started uh Cy Mines paranormal. And, um, and when I started Cy Mines, I, put uh, people on the team who had uh, at least a bachelor's degree. Um, I actually had a few people actually have PhDs and was attempting to try to bring in some more people with more of an academic approach. Yeah. And, um, well, like, I mean, I, you know, I have, a, I have a very, dear, very dear friend. I mean, I never really dissolved the team. We just kind of all, you know, drifted our own ways. But um, one of my friends on the team, uh, he has a PhD in pastoral counseling, and he was invaluable. You know, we we get a you know home investigation, and you know the the first visit that we would have would would be me and perhaps another team member, and then. And then him and, you know, his job was to do kind of a mental and emotional psychological assessment of, of the people living in the house. And that really, that cleared a lot of cases really, really quickly. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so I felt that that was like a really good approach is, you know, let's kind of weed out yeah. some other things that may be going on. Now, I'm not saying that those people weren't experiencing activity, but sometimes the activity was being amplified by emotional issues and, and, and things that were going on in, in the house. Sure. And, um, and I started realizing too, that, you know, I, I do also do energy work. It kind of messed around with some feng shui and I'm a Reiki and you'd go into places that people are having some type of issue, paranormal or otherwise. 
and the energies were always off. I, I don't think I've ever been in a haunted place that wasn't like, like bad, like poor feng shui or like clutter or filth or, you know, there's like bankruptcy or there's just, just really some really kind of bad other stuff kind of going on. So I'm still not sure whether the paranormal stuff attracts that or if it's, if it's the reverse. Right. Yeah. I, bl- I, I would definitely, for me, I don't know. I'm just going to stay on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> I get myself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but um but really you know th- so when i would start to go in you know if i go in with somebody and you know we do you know an investigation i mean you you never want to make things worse and you, i think you have to be really careful when you're going to people's homes and doing that because you know you can really kind of stir up more trouble for them but um but i did have a i did have a case the most intense case well i've had two intense cases um one in which, you know, everyone was, was screaming demon. Um, I'm, the jury is still out on that one. I had some things happen that I truly cannot explain. Um, when I was on the initial phone call with the woman, um, I was in the middle of lunch and I had, uh, cut open an avocado and I had set it down on my, I had quartz, uh, countertops in my kitchen, which if you know, like quartz and granite, they're always kind of cool to the touch. I mean, yeah. they're actually room temperatures. So they feel cool to the touch because, you know, your room temperatures, 70 some degrees, you know, and, you know, you're much warmer than that. So I'd set it down. I wanted to go have some privacy um, so that my son wouldn't hear what was going on. And, um, you know, I talked to the woman and we arranged a meeting and I go back in the kitchen and I go to pick up my avocado and it's hot. Oh, wow. And I said to my son, I said, did you microwave my avocado? And he's like, mom, I haven't left my room. I'm like, well, that's really weird. Yeah, that is um, weird. And but there were there were other issues there. Um, our psychologist kind of, you know, talked to the woman. We just we kind of just ended up leaving leaving that all alone. Um, I, the jury, like I said, is still out on that case. And then um, I had another case where a man was um, had an attachment had an attachment by um, an incubus. And that was also a little bit beyond, uh, beyond my scope. Um, I had a long conversation with him. Um, I called in some other people that tend to do more of, of that type of, um, investigation. And, uh, and the, the, the bottom line is the guy said he wanted it gone, but he wasn't willing to do what was necessary to get rid of it. You know, Uh, I see. Yeah. you know, you've, you, you gotta, you gotta get rid of all the porn. You gotta get rid of all this. We're going to drag everything in the house outside in the sunshine. We are going to wash every wall, you know, with, you know, lavender and and lemon. And we are going to just get everything squeaky clean. We're going to get you squeaky clean. You know, we're going to sage, we're going to smudge. And we're just going to, you know, that's basically sort of doing like a, like a spiritual bombing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, and, and he wasn't willing to do that. And, uh, and that's kind of what I see with people that have attachments. It's they, you don't just, you know, walk down the street and have something attached to you. Usually you have some kind of opening in your life or you sort of, you know, asked for it to come in. Mm-hmm, exactly. But, but now that is a very, 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 you know, small percentage of, of, of any kind of case or anything that yeah. I've run into. So I want to just touch a little bit on the avocado thing. We, um, did a, podcast a few months ago and after the podcast we had these weird things keep happening like things would for whatever reason there was no fan no wind no anything and things fell off the shelf onto me and just a lot of little weird things were happening a lot of stuff falling off shelves and things being misplaced and we were like is it possible for something to come through electronics, you know, through a phone call or what have you and attach itself and, 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 you know, do little mischievous things. And so when you started talking about that, that's, I, that was my first memory is to. Yeah, I think, I think it's possible. I mean, I think, you know, portals are not, are not just these like swirling vortexes, you exactly. know, portals are, are, can be anything really. And, you know, even, even something so. as simple as, yeah, it's that intention, 
And, um, and I'm not saying that, you know, it was necessarily, you know, bad, just, you know, something was trying to get your attention yeah. or, you know, right. it lasted for, for about a week or so. And <laughs> then did. finally I like went through and did some sage and I was like, okay, well it's been fun, but you, you gotta go now. <laughs> <laughs> that is that that's very healthy. It's, you know, you have to have boundaries with the dead, just like you do with humans. You exactly. Know? Like, that is not okay. Right? I, I see you. I hear you. I acknowledge you. you yes. Know? And I think sometimes that's all they want is just to be acknowledged so yeah it was interesting for sure that's interesting yeah they always say that you know the the unmemorialized dead don't rest you know and mm-hmm. that that always really strikes me as you know we've had so many tragedies and um i think it's really important to you know to put up a monument to put people's names there and just yes. to kind of acknowledge it and because a lot of the most haunted places are places that you know, people didn't, they didn't get that, you know, it was a sanatorium or it was a hospital, you know, and they, right. you know, the people were just numbers and, you know, there's unmarked graves and. Oh yes. I'm from Savannah, Georgia. And we have a lot of that, a lot of unmarked graves and mass graves. And it's just the energy there in the surrounding areas is so heavy. I almost can't even live there anymore. I have to leave. I, I can go home for a little while and then I find myself, I just have to go because I'm an empath and, you know, I could talk to your friend. She needs to teach me how to <laughs> yeah, turn how that off up. sometimes, yeah, like, you know? Zip up. <laughs> zip those chakras. Yeah. Yeah. I'll ever, I'll ever talk to you about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because it, because it can be, it can be very overwhelming. And, you know, if you're an empath, you're not even just getting like the dead coming through, but you're getting just people coming through. Yeah. Right. The living. Exactly. You just walk among the living and, you know, you tend to pick up, you know, people's ick and you yes. know, just, you know, take that, take that good salt bath at the end of the night. And exactly. <laughs> yes. Get rid of exactly. it all. Salt baths. They're the best. <laughs> <laughs> so did you did you do a lot of residential cases? No, I didn't do very many at all actually. Uh, that's all that's all I did was residential cases. I have hundreds of them that I did. And what I tend to find out is a lot of the cases that I did do I ended up getting these calls that they had other members, some kind of teams going in and messing stuff up. So I try to always my thing is it's very psychological to you. These, these clients, they're looking at you, they want your help. And mm-hmm. then you have people out there that's telling them that they have, you know, demonic things scratching in the walls when in actuality, there's a mouse scratching in the wall. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's tough out there. It It is. And, you know, like I said, you don't ever want to make things worse. And there's usually a lot of other things going on. Um, the, the one case I was talking about with a psychiatrist, you know, or our psychologist, he sat down with them and, you know, and then I, and I was a realtor at the time. I started talking to the people and they said, well, you know, we don't really like it here, you know, so we stopped paying our mortgage. And that like my ears perked right up. <laughs> I said, look, I'm a realtor and I'm also a paranormal investigator. I'm going to tell you right now, your biggest fear should be that the bank is going to come and take your place. <laughs> right? Right? Like three months. I'm like, I understand that, you know, you see this native American walking through your house, but he's not hurting you. He's not doing anything, but I can guarantee you're going to be homeless. So, you know, let's try to focus on, on what the real, what the real situation going on here. Want to find out what it is, pay your bills. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can work it out because <laughs> that's about, yeah, and, and, you know, and, you know, so, you know, and in that case, you know, we, you know, we did our EMF measurements and, you know, yeah, the, you know, the kitchen stove, I think the clock there was just blasting all kinds of EMF and, you know, the mother was on, you know, all kinds of anxiety medications and they were living together, but they were divorced there was a kid that, you know, he was not being properly socialized. You know, he was having all kinds of issues. And so he was the one that started seeing things. And I, and I think in a way he was probably very sensitive, but in a way it was way of, you know, of him getting kind of attention in this weird sort of family dynamic that was going on. And then they kept saying, well, you know, it's this Native American. And I said, well, look around. I said, you know, you have Native American art on all your walls. You have wolves and coyotes and 
in all of this, I said, you know, if there's if there is a Native American spirit around, he thinks that you know this is a cool place to be because you've invited him. Exactly. Basically. Yeah. Right. Or perhaps maybe uh, that Native American being's like, wow, what's this place? You know, <laughs> I just walked <laughs> through a portal or something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was scrying. Yeah, he was just out hunting. Yeah, he that's was out right. hunting mine in his own business. You know? <laughs> Boom. That's right. That wouldn't that be something? Yeah, huh? that would be. <laughs> so tell me this: <clears throat> Do you think we're on the right track when it comes to paranormal investigation? Could it be, for example, uh, I know we use all these meters, and and most of these meters weren't even made for what we're using them for because mm-hmm. we're we're stretching it. We're like, yes, we want something so bad. We'll use whatever. Do you think like me, I use all my senses when I'm out. I use my sense of smell and taste and, you know, anything that I, I, I use that heavily, uh, goosebumps, I'll get goosebumps or what have you. Is there something that you think we might be doing or something we could be doing, uh, differently? That's a really interesting question. Um, when I started investigating, you know, I bought all of the stuff. I had all of the stuff. And I, I still I still do enjoy buying equipment. Because like I said, you know, if there's something that's beyond my senses and we're trying to get equipment to sort of, you know, measure in that um, – you know, in that frequency or in that realm, you know, like a full spectrum camera, things like that. Um, the more investigating I've done, I tend to do, I have a very bare minimum approach now. I tend to just have very few pieces of equipment. I'm like you, I figure I already have, you know, a very highly sensitive paranormal detector and that's yeah. my brain yes. yeah you know exactly. my body and and i'm very when i when i'm in a location i am very aware of what i'm feeling how my body feels i'll, I'll get what i call the paranormal tingle it's like this weird <laughs> I love that it is it, it is like I, and sometimes i can't always describe it i'll say i'm just i'm getting that tingle it's like something's gonna happen sometimes my feet will feel vibrate Sometimes my legs will get cold, like right. a post flash. Um, you'll get the the popping in your ear almost from like a pressure change. Yes. Sometimes I'll almost feel like um, sort of like a little tingly at the crown of my head, like something sort of like, you know, messing with my Yes, messing my with your scalp in my head. Yes. Or like my heart chakra will kind of feel or I'll like, you know, I'll I'll get really emotional. Yes. Um, Because I always try to do this. Like when I go in, it's like, you know, how do I feel today? I feel good. You know, nothing hurts. I, you know, I feel good. And then, you know, if you're in a location and all of a sudden, you know, that, that situation, something changes. It's like, why is that, you know, why is that changing? Yes. Yeah. Those, those are your tells and your triggers, I think. And I think just the more people, you know, experience paranormal activity, the better you get at recognizing that and making those associations. Yes. Yes, exactly. The because like tinkle. I love that. The tinkle. <laughs> the I love par- it. The paranormal tinkle. <laughs> Not the tinkle. <laughs> the I gotta go to the tingle. bathroom. It's That's what's on the mind. Yeah. I gotta go I've pee. Got that <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, I'm, uh, most of us are, you know, we, we tend to use our feelings and I, truthfully, I totally love, uh, EVPs. If I can get EVPs, I'm like, well, where did where did it come from? You know, it mm-hmm. just come out of thin air. So I'm really fascinated with EVPs, and I, I like using ghost boxes now and again. Even though mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of audio paradelia, but the the EVP that comes out of the air, it's kind of like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, I I love I love EVPs. I I totally love them, and. Um, and, you know, I, I have a lot of fun with my REM pod just because it kind of alerts you, you know, to things that are, that are going on. Yes. Yeah. And, but yeah, my, but my tingle is, you know, it's been, it's been totally, <laughs> you know, spot on. Yep. Um, mine we, has been too. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, um, we visited uh, Prospect Place in Ohio. And, and in that case, it, I have this like, it's like my feet are vibrating. It's the weirdest thing. And I walked into that place and I know, you know, people, I guess they get used to me saying these things. I'm like, you guys, I'm like, there's something up. I, my feet are vibrating like crazy. And we were all standing in a semicircle in front of the, um, 
our, our host, you know, he was kind of, you know, chatting with us and explaining, you know, things about the, about the house before he left. And right behind him, this man walked like right behind him. And I turned around and I said, how many of us are there? And I counted, you know, all five of us were standing there. I'm like, did you guys just see that? (laughs) There was somebody that walked behind him. Oh, wow. So, and, yeah, you, and, and after, yeah, so, and after that, you know, my feet kind of stopped, you know, tingling and, um, you know, and then we, we got, I think maybe one, one EVP that night, but. But to yeah, see that was, though, that's. Just, yeah, that was pretty crazy. Yeah. And, um, it was almost like, I didn't see the guy's face. It's almost like he kind of had his head down and it was weird. Cause I always say to people like, did you see it with your eyes? Did you see it with your real eyes? And I saw it with my real eyes, not, you know, like a third eye or, you know, yeah. an impression yeah, yeah. that you might have. That's why it just makes me wonder. I mean, what, what are we doing that we need? I mean, <laughs> is there something we're doing or are we like tuned into the paranormal for just that split second and and then it goes away and we're like oh how did that happen you know <laughs> even though we're doing it you know i don't know i just i find it really fascinating <laughs> yeah it's not it, it's not like the paranormal is on all the time exactly. i mean I, I think yeah i think at paranormal places you have much you know i think they're haunted day or night and it just kind of like cycles in almost you know like these two universes have touched or these two dimensions have touched Right. You know, because I've I've had crazy things happen and then nothing for like the rest of the night. Right. Or like you, I'll have senses, I'll feel like something's happening or I'll have a situation like what you just had, you know, with the guy, seeing the guy or you can just feel that something's there, but you can't get it as evidence on Mm -hmm. the little, you know. And so, yeah, I've been in quite a few teams where people won't respect that if they didn't get it on their machine then it didn't happen kind of thing and i don't like that i don't like that well yeah yeah i mean because i I think at the end of the day so much of paranormal just it comes down to a personal experience exactly and exactly you know we yeah i can tell you all my personal experiences but you know unless you have your own then you know it's just going to be this elusive thing and i swear to god they do not want to get captured on film or on equipment. Right. I agree. Um, I agree. I mean, we used to, oh, we used to just laugh about this, you know, and um, we had taken Forrest Burgess of Astonishing Legends with us and the name drop. And, um, you know, and he was, you know, he was just getting into into ghost hunting. And, you know, so he bought all the equipment and he had all the things, you know, and we took him to Waverly and, you know, we had his camera and oh, he was being, he was so diligent. And, you know, and I'm kind of, you know, Forrest, you got your best equipment with you. Just leave all that stuff, you know, at home base and let's just go walk the halls. Well, sure enough, um, you know, he had, we had been filming and filming and filming and we were getting activity. We we're getting, you know, stuff to happen. And um, and he had just I think his camera had finally died. I think like the batteries had died and it had just powered down and he looks up <laughs> and he sees this full body apparition like walk in front <laughs> And he's like, well, it was just somebody from our group. And we're like, no, you know, we went through the whole scenario. No, it wasn't anyone in our group. It wasn't anybody, you know, wearing a baseball cap. And it certainly wasn't anyone in our group that was self-illuminated from within. (laughs) You know, the guy didn't, the guy didn't have a flashlight. He wasn't carrying anything, you know, and, and, and he just could not, he could not wrap his mind around that. He's like, well, surely it was someone in our group. And I said, no, I said, he's like, well, I, you know, I don't have my camera. I didn't get a picture of it. And I said, I know that's the way it works. Yeah. And that's the way they want it sometimes. And that would be their experience, which a lot of people yeah. don't, a lot of people discredit. I mean, you can't discredit somebody's, experience. somebody's experience. Exactly. It's their experience. Uh, I mean, you can feed me any story. It's up to me to say, yeah, or nay, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, it's an experience and that's why. You just, that experience to you, you'll never forget that was your experience. And I believe exactly. sometimes that the, the spirits, maybe maybe they don't like the energy that's coming from that human. Maybe that person, that investigator has a really bad attitude or just whatever. And if there are spirits there, they're just like, I don't want to show myself to this person. <laughs> yeah. You know, 
maybe oh, they're. Totally oh, I I completely agree. I, yes. Yeah, it is. It's sort of it, it's you know, you're sort of like a blessing because you've kind of been chosen. Yeah, I exactly. Think they, I think yes. they're really careful about who they show themselves to, and 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 to be fair, at Waverly, um, that's the other thing is I think people who haven't experienced it or maybe don't you know ghost hunt. They don't understand. They think it's going to be like Hollywood. Like something is going to jump right in front of you and scare the exactly. crap out of you. And you're going to know that that was, you know, that that was, you know, whatever this entity. Yeah. yeah. Ghosts on cue. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> it doesn't it's work that so, way. it's like, it's, it's such a, it's such a subtle thing. I, I mean, I saw a full bite apparition um, up on the, the top floor in the. Uh, the roof at Waverly. It was the same thing, like three in the morning, you know, you have to leave at four. We were there. Um, it was an awesome night to be there. Um, it had thunderstormed the whole day before. So the air was really charged. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, all those ions and, but it was hot and humid in July and, you know, all, yeah, by, by 3 AM, you know, you're tired, your equipment is all depleted. You're mm-hmm. sick of changing batteries and I said, um, I was there with my um, now ex-husband, and I said, let's just go up to the roof. And, you know, it's such a beautiful view up there. Let's just go up there and, you know, get look some at the stars. air. And, yes. Yeah, look at the stars, get the air. Exactly. So, I love know, Waverly. Walk, <laughs> oh, it's it's just, it, yeah, to me, it's really, it's, it's really sort of almost a peaceful place. I feel and, the um, same way. I love Waverly. And we walked up, and as soon as we got to the fifth floor, we both kind of looked to our left and then, um, and I said to him, I'm like, oh, that's, you know, that's so-and-so. And I don't know how he beat us up here from, you know, the, the gift shop, but I said, let's, you know, let's go up here. So we kind of went over to the right and we, we'd only gone a little ways. And then suddenly we both looked at each other and we said, what did you see? <laughs> and I said, you know, uh, ghost hunters always wear black. They don't wear white. And he goes, right. Exactly. And I said, and I don't think anybody was lugging a chair around with him. I mean, it's like, no. And it's like, so it was someone in white sitting down. And she had this really big bow on the side of her head. Oh, wow. <laughs> said, That's not any of our ghost hunters. And then, of course, we're running back, you know, and, and it was gone. But, you know, it was one of those things like we both looked right at it and it didn't register in our brains that it could be any anything other than, you know, one of our other ghost hunter yeah. friends that were with us. Right. That's cool. But it clearly was not, you know, it's like, you know, the, the dude wearing a baseball cap and, you know, didn't have a flashlight, but was, you know, lit from within. It's yeah. your brain does this weird thing. You know, your brain is trying to sort and try to figure out, you know, what it is you're, you're seeing. And, and that's what I think a lot of non paranormal people don't understand is that you literally, you have this experience and your brain is trying to process it. And it's such a fleeting thing. It really is. Well, like you said. nothing like it is on the shows. Yeah, and like you said, they they watch these shows and they they think that it's going to be, you know, cue the ghost and the ghost is going to come out. And it's not like that at all. You can sit in a place for two days and not get nothing. And you could go there one day and you get five or six things happen. It's never... It's 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 a hit and miss thing, basically. And I've noticed that Waverly Hills, you can it's those moments when you're just kind of tired and you're just kind of sitting there talking and shooting the breeze. When things will happen, when you're nice and relaxed and you know you're not expecting it, then things happen there, and it's awesome. Waverly's my favorite oh, I, place. I don't know if you can tell, but <laughs> oh, I, I love I I absolutely love Waverly. Yeah, it's um, it's like we call it, it's a it's a good fishing hole because I I always compare ghost hunting to fishing. <laughs> right, and I just always talk about this, and and because we'd always say to people, "Are you a quiet fisherman or a noisy fisherman?" Because some fishermen will go and they will not speak; they will just be really quiet. And I've seen that with ghost hunters; they will sit. And they will be on high alert, you know, with their equipment at the ready, just, you know, constantly, you know, looking to catch something. Yes. Well, I'm a noisy fisherman. I'm there. It's a social thing. You know, I'll kind of just talk quietly. You know, I will, you know, I'll be very aware of everything that's going on and, you know, we'll have our equipment or whatever and just, you know, paying attention to, you know, how I feel. Yes. And that is when the dead will chime in. They're like, oh, I, you know, I, I used to be alive and, you know, I can interact with, you know, whatever topic you're discussing, you know. Yes. And that's where I have had the best luck. They just, they chime in or you see things because I think you are in that very relaxed, receptive state, like yes. you said. Exactly. Right. Yep. Yeah, exactly. 
And, you know, and that, that to me is, is the fun of it, you know, and, um, but yeah, that's, that to me is, is the best part of ghost hunting. Oh yeah. I yeah. agree. Yep. So what's your favorite piece of equipment? Um, I do love my digital recorder, um, for EVPs. I've kind of really gotten hooked on my REM pod lately. <laughs> it's, um, it's been really good because I, I can kind of, you know, stick it somewhere you know, and just kind of be aware of what's going on. Um, I've been doing a lot of traveling and just because of my travel, I, I tend to be doing these sleeping investigations. So, um, I've been doing a lot of like a TikTok live or, or Facebook live, you know, I'll set up equipment and, um, and kind of, you know, sit for, you know, maybe an hour or so and kind of ghost hunt. And then I'll just, I'll leave the, you know, the screens and the monitors open and then I'll just place equipment around the room. And, um, and then kind of just see what happens and, yeah. um, yeah, you'll get, you know, get the REM pod like going off during the night that always, you know, will wake you up and know that something oh, is, is happening. Cool. And, we should uh, try that, babe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What about your <laughs> spirit, my... your spirit story box? You want to talk about that a little bit? Oh yeah. Yeah. I would love to talk about spirit story box. So, um, so what, what brought that into, you know, light? What was the, the story that, cause I mean, Usually, if you create something like that, it's because you want you're doing it for uh, ITC research, which you're going to do, and you want to see if this helps communicate with with the uh, the spirits. Well, exactly. You know, everybody wants to build the better mousetrap. You know, and um, so th- so um, I had started Simon's Paranormal around 2010, and then right about that time, um, I had met Roger Pingleton. Um, I was I was with Roger for. Uh, 10 years we're now divorced but um he was the IT manager for the team and um I was so excited when I met Roger because he's a software engineer and you know just so much of of the tech everything is you know very tech driven and um so you know when we were being noisy fishermen you know sitting around and talking on all these you know long night investigations we you know said well what would you do that would make things better and um, Roger worked at the university as a software engineer. You know, I had I had worked at a university, and um, we became aware of the Global Consciousness Project. Now, this was a project that was originally uh, started at Princeton University, and it became a global experiment. And uh, so, you know, having an academic background, you know, that like really piqued my curiosity and it really piqued Roger's curiosity too, because it involves computers. So basically they had done some studies and they realized that human consciousness, human thought, human intention can actually affect computers, can actually affect electronic devices. And, and they've tested that. So, um, without getting super technical here, um, they would devise a, a computer and the, and the computer would just spit out random numbers. That's, you know, all the ones and in, in the zeros. And it would just be a completely non-pattern, completely random array of these numbers being generated. And there's certain ways that you can test that it actually is random statistically. Well, they started putting people in front of these computers and saying, you know, just focus on the computer and make the numbers non-random and, and people can do this. So... They placed these computers all over the world. It's a giant global experiment just to see if they stopped generating random numbers. And what they found is that in certain times of global human crisis, they would change. And that was completely unexpected. And the the biggest event that they recorded was the um, Christmas Eve tsunami disaster in the Philippines. Wow. Was it the Philippines that, that killed twenty five thousand people? Oh wow! And so all over the world, these computers all of a sudden started to generate non random numbers. So something was affecting them, and they believe that it's it's actually human consciousness over the mad magnitude of this tragedy. So, you know, when people in the metaphysical realm says, you know, we're all connected, we all have this global consciousness, this is actually scientific proof of that. Wow. And what was even more interesting, other than the fact that, you know, it, it's sort of, you know, like in Star Wars, you know, when, you know, when so many people die, it's like there's a disturbance in the force. Yes. 
what they noticed is that the numbers started becoming less random about 12 hours before the event happened. So this is actually scientific proof that there was some, you know, precognition that something was going to happen. People are actually almost having a premonition in feeling like there was going to be this really big, you know, loss of life. Well, I mean, animals do that too. Animals always seems to, to know when storms are coming and you can watch the birds and what birds are doing to know if a storm is going to come or not. And so, yeah, that, it makes sense. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, like be, be, yeah, be, before like any of the really large, like the California earthquakes, people are saying, you know, my dog was going crazy. My parrot was acting crazy, you know, for the day before. So, you know, that to me was really fascinating because you know, a lot of things that people in the metaphysical world have said, you know, people don't understand that, you know, these, this actually is translating into the scientific world. This is something that can actually be, you know, measured. Yes. And, um, and so Roger said, you know, it would actually be really cool to make an app and, and base it on a random number generator. And so that's basically what, what the app does is it's, um, it's got some algorithms and things that are proprietary, but it it's running basically, um, numbers and seeing if they become less random. So we had done a, a, a test of this. We had gone to uh, Willow's Weep, which is an incredibly haunted house in uh, Cayuga, Indiana. I don't know if it's, um, they were, they were going to tear it down. That place was incredibly active. And uh, so we, it, the great thing about it, it's, it's a small little house and she had like a little clubhouse that was adjacent to it. So we set up our, our laptop that was running all these programs while we hunted and we time stamped everything. And, um, and, you know, at the end of the night, the next day, when we go back through our investigation, you know, we marked, you know, we got like three EVPs and we knew the time at which they happened. Well, then we compared that with the random number readings that we were getting and they corresponded. So every time that there was something paranormal that happened in the house, it was also registering as this non-random event. Wow. So the theory is, is that it's, it's almost like physics becomes briefly suspended at these times when the other side punches through for you know lack of a better way to explain it so it's almost like when our veil is pierced or these you know our universes rub together our dimensions collide or whatever you want to believe happens that's when the computer will will detect this so that's where our app functions and so it's just constantly scanning and when it starts seeing that there's less randomness going on it means there's something kind of off there's something kind of weird getting ready to happen and so we put it in a database of words that it can speak. And so it it allows the consciousness, living or dead, to, to pick those words. Now, I think it works really, really well. And it works really well in the hands of, of people like a medium or an intuitive. And I think it's just because they have a way of, you know, manipulating their consciousness. And I'm still not sure if the spirit is doing it or if they're doing it through the intuitive in the case of an intuitive. But um, my medium friends have have really good luck with it, and it seems to speak a lot of really accurate hmm. things. And is it for is it only for the Apple phones, or can the... yeah, it's only for iOS, oh, unfortunately. Man. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's good for me because well, I have Apple. <laughs> well, you should you should get it and, and let me know your experiences. Um, I always recommend um, it, it. You know, you just you just turn it on and, and it's it's ready to go. There are there there's only two settings that you can do. There's a high and a low sensitivity. Low sensitivity, you'll get fewer words, but they seem to be more meaningful as opposed to the high sensitivity. And then just whether you want sound. And um, I think it now has a um, a screensaver mode that will go into. And I was just to recommend, you know, just you can let it run all night and just really kind of dim your screen down and uh, and let it go and just, you know, see what it says for you. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I think that spirit, I mean, spirit can use any means, you know, necessary to communicate. And I think this just makes it a little bit maybe easier for them. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. A lot of people say, oh, you can't use your cell phone. You know, you can't use this app or anything like that. Because, Well, why couldn't you? I mean, if it can, if a spirit can manipulate 
radio signals in your spirit box, then why couldn't it manipulate something else? I mean, there's way more than we, yeah, there's way more that we just don't, we don't understand. We'll never understand it. No, I mean, you know, Google, you know, phone calls from the dead, you know, there, there's people that have had their phone ring and, you know, it's their dead grandmother, you know, or someone had just died in an accident 10 minutes ago. And, you know, they were actually dead at the time that, you know, they thought that they spoke with them on the phone. So I, I mean, I, yeah, I think spirit can do a lot of things. It's just a matter of, you know, what their energy level is and what might be easier for them. Yeah. I, yeah. I've had, I've had great luck with a lot of different apps. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I mean, I haven't, my, when I paranormal investigated full time, I, um, I didn't, I didn't use apps or anything. I just basically use a, you know, REM pods and K2s mm-hmm. and mail meters. And in fact, I kind of stayed away from K2s cause they're so sensitive, but mm-hmm. Then I got, as I got older, I'm like, well, you know what? Let's see what this does and <laughs> see what that I does. Love my key too. <laughs> so I have, I have, you know, mixed, I, I have a lot of mixed things with apps, but I am in no way someone that says you cannot use them because that's <laughs> obviously wrong. You can use them. Well, and I, I like to think too, you can use it as a conversation starter. You're trying to start a conversation with the other side, you know? So absolutely, you know, at least, at least gives you, you know, a line, you know, chain of thought to, to follow, you know, if, you know, if it says consumption, it's like, oh, okay. Did you have tuberculosis? You know, were you sick? Right. (laughs) It's uh, it's kind of, I think you just kind of can use it as a prompt or conversation starter. Um, But, you know, we've gotten letters from all over the world and, you know, people have said that, it has just said incredible things to them. Um, It can speak one, two or three word sentences. Okay. And, and of course the, the statistical probability of it speaking three words is, is very, very, very high odds, but it has done that. And, and um, this one gentleman that wrote to us, he's now a friend of ours. He said that it spoke all three words of it. They were all names and they were all his sister's names. Oh wow! It spoke her Ooh. first and her two middle names um, all at once when he was trying to contact her. So I thought, you know, the odds of that happening are just—they're—they're they're astronomical. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> it would select those as, i mean, there's you know, there's thirty four hundred. There's about thirty four hundred words in the in the database: names and diseases and places and things and you know, nouns and adjectives and right. And um, it's just. And um, I I was just visiting my my friend in North Carolina, and um, she's she's a little bit sensitive. Um, her grandmother was actually a very fam- famous medium, and um, and wanted her to take over doing that, and she just never like felt comfortable doing that. And boy, she was having great luck with with Spirit Story Box. And what we noticed is that every single night we w- we would go out on the porch probably around eight o'clock in the evening after dinner, and we would run SSB. And it was saying the same words every single night at almost the same time. Wow. And in the same, just the same things over and over again, you know, we'd, we'd start talking about her dad and it would say things, you know, garage her, you know, her dad was a mechanic and it just things that, you know, it's, yeah. it would, it resets the database. It's not like just because one word came up that, you know, it's going to come up again. It has the same odds of coming up again. And then when it does, you know, within almost the same time every day. Yeah, it was, it was really, um, I think beyond coincidence. Right. So tell, tell us a little bit, what's, what's paranormal elements? Oh, I thought that was a really fun project. Um, Roger and I did that. Um, like I said, we're, we're both kind of, you know, sciencey geeks and, you know, being in the sciences, you know, every, everything in science is about categorizing, you know, we have the periodic table of elements you know in zoology we have all the different classifications and so we wanted to do that with with paranormal phenomena and so we sat down and categorized every single type of paranormal phenomena that we could think of if anybody can think of one we missed you know please please let us know but we we think we got them all and and they're in the chart um, it's kind of just a, a fun thing to look at. If you actually uh, download the app for iOS, you can click on it 
and uh, it will give you more information and then you can actually score yourself. So if you click on a, in, a phenomenon that you've experienced, like you've gotten an EVP, you now have a score of one. And um, I haven't done mine in a while, but I think I was at I don't know, somewhere around 58 or something. Did you need to get that? <laughs> wow. Get you, can, you can keep score with your friends as, as how much, uh, you know, paranormal events you've experienced um, all the way up to, I think, I think we even put in um, like abduction phenomena. On the whole oh. UFO like side of the spectrum. Experience. This is awesome. We need this. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> I will for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really fun, and and you can kind of see we you know it. Roger did a really good job, I think. Um, you know, categorizing all the different types of phenomena because we tried to think of it as you know being more like visual phenomena or auditory phenomena or you know um, telekinesis or object movement, teleportation. Um, yes. That's a real fun one. Have you ever had anything teleport on any of your investigations? No, okay. not th- I've had a lot of things disappear, <laughs> but that's never come back. Well, I think I have had that. Yeah, I had that when I was um, sage in a house one time. It- something was moved i laid it down and went downstairs to get something and when i came back up it had been moved so that's teleporting right <laughs> see yeah, yeah teleporting yeah. apportation yeah. yeah there you yeah, go yeah, yeah. see that's yeah see so i need this I need I, i've had a lot I, of I think things it's really <laughs> i've just had a lot of things just disappear i'm like where did that go i wish i could find i guess i'm still doing that <laughs> I'm not even investigating. I'm like, where did I put my it, keys? It, it happens more as you get older, right? <laughs> yes, it does. That's for true. I'm not saying that's paranormal, but you know, yeah, that's my cover story. Yeah. That's right. Just that's it. my cover story. I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, but it, it sure does look interesting. And I'm sitting here, I'm looking at it now. And uh, I've never even heard of it. I'm I'm glad that that we're talking about it and maybe this will, this will help others out there that, right. I mean, cause it's, re- it's fascinating. It it's fascinating. like categorizing everything. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. It never really got a lot of traction. Um, Spirit story box got a lot of traction. Um, we released that in September of 2013 and it, and it went international. I mean, it was, it was like shocking. You know, we were, <laughs> um, it, it was so funny because, you know, we had worked so hard on it and, and Roger bless his heart. I mean, he's, he's a brilliant software engineer and, and programmer and he just put his all into it. And, um, it, it was sort of like our baby and he couldn't let go of it. You know, I said, okay, you know, it's, it's time to release, you know, we're Apple developers, you know, it's time to hit, you know, hit send and upload it to Apple. And it's like, it's like, you couldn't do it. It's like, no, it's not good enough. I need to do that. And I'm like, I'm going to kill you. Just hit send, please. You know, this, it, it took up, you know, six months of our, of our lives, you know, um, you know, every weekend and, um, and after, you know, his full-time job. So you know, and then once we did that and, um, and I submitted a a press release and it got picked up and we got interviewed by, um, the Indy star, one of the Indy star reporters. And I think it was just a really slow news day. (laughs) And, and, you know, September is kind of a good time, you know, for anything that's spooky. And it went on in the AP wire and we were like, oh my gosh. And, um, and I'll remember, you know, we had, we had been working and everything. And then, um, I'm like, oh my God, you know, we, we really need, we, you know, somebody's going to maybe want like a photo of us. So, you know, we like, you know, got out of our sweatpants and, you know, got in the shower and got <laughs> cleaned up and we went and we sat on, um, we sat on my couch in the front room and, and took a picture of us, you know, you know, holding our baby there. And, yeah. um, and my proudest moment is that god awful photo. I mean, it it made Art Bell's website. Wow! We never got interviewed then, but it was on his like website, you know, briefly. And I was like, oh wow! And then, um, you know, you get you get that little tiny glimmer of limelight, and then don't ever read the comments. Don't ever read the comment section because okay. people said, you know, God, they had such an ugly couch. He had such an ugly oh my ugly God. people. <laughs> Okay, we couch. figured out and right, we figured out a new way to talk to the dad, and all you care about is what my couch yeah. looks like. <laughs> humans. <Right. laughs> yes, humans. So yeah, so um 
Yeah, it, you know, it, um, it generated a lot of interest. We got just really, really cool letters from, you know, people all over and, um, and it, it's just been really fun. And I, I have to say, I mean, it still makes the, the top entertainment chart and it's, I mean, it's been years, you know, it's been, yeah. it's been updated to keep up with the, with the iOS updates, but yeah, it's, it's still just kind of cranking along. Heck yeah. yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. It's, We're having that too, right, babe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so t- have you guys done any, like, um, any TV or anything? Yeah. Um, well, uh, my team, what we were, uh, one half of uh, Dan Hall did a paranormal movie called Ghostville, in which he followed around um, some paranormal investigators and um, and filmed us in a documentary. Uh, our my team was the whole second half of that. Um, well, what was the documentary? We, what, what, where was you at? It's called Go. Uh, it's called Ghostville. Uh, the first half of the film. Um, was with, I believe, the Foreman brothers and um, an old medium named Cassidy. I can't remember her last name right now. I think they they uh, investigated the Glore Psychiatric Museum in St. Joseph, St. Joe, um, Missouri. And then our half um, was a place that is now cut off from us, uh, was the uh, Owen County Poor Farm in Indiana. And um, and he just followed us around uh, the night we investigated it, and we we had a really eventful investigation. Um, Yay! One of uh, we had a really interesting um, member on our team. He had had a, a traumatic brain injury, and 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 after that, it really opened him up. He became a lot more um, intuitive, psychic, and um, and he got he got attacked. Oh and goodness. I don't, I don't know that, you know, that this entity meant to hurt him. He said it, um, it was the spirit of this, uh, mentally challenged, but fully adult, large male. So he was, you know, very large, you know, probably a couple hundred pounds, like six foot, but he had probably the mental capacity of a five-year-old and, um, and he ended up connecting with this spirit and he said it felt like the, the spirit like gave him a huge bear hug. Well, anyway, it's pretty, it's pretty dramatic because, you know, Brad takes off running for, you know, the exit and, um, and I sort of intercepted him and, and kind of got him to crash out on the couch and he goes into a grand mal seizure, oh, which wow. he was he was prone to. So it, 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 it made for pretty dramatic, um. Although I think some of our outtakes were better than actually what um, what what stayed in because we were filming at the same time. But um, yeah, it was it was a pretty crazy event. That so, um, that so what is film. what is the Owen County? Was it the poor farm you said? Yeah, it was it was a former poor farm, and um, and now believe it or not, um, I mean a family bought it and they turned it they turned it back into a house, so it's no longer invel- available for investigations. So what is a poor farm? But, so a poor farm, um, you know, back in the day, if people became indigent and 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 poor, basically, it's you know, if you became homeless, you you went into one of these poor farms. And so a poor farm was um, they were very common in Indiana and, and I think elsewhere. They were almost a fully um, sustained little, almost like a commune. They always had you know cows and gardens and oh, everyone okay. who lived right. in the. It, or anyone who lived in the home, they basically, you know, all worked. They always had like a big communal kitchen. Okay. All right. Um, but not even just being poor would get you in there. You know, if you were a widow, you would get in there. And, sure. And so you could also get people in there that maybe had like some mental conditions or maybe, you know, some criminals would get in the mix. And yeah. and so it's it's led to a lot of paranormal activity just because you have all these people living, you know, in concert with each other and, you know, bad things would happen. You know, you, you know, you'd get somebody, like either the staff was abusive or, you know, you'd, you'd have other, you know, inhabitants sort of, you know, abusing yeah. other people that lived there and things. Um, I think but that Ashmore was a really States crazy place. Like that too. I think Ashmore States at one point was a poor, poor place. Like yeah, that. I believe it was. Yeah. yeah. Have you been to Ashmore? Yeah, I've been to Ashmore. I like that mm-hmm. too. I like it there too. But now it's a yeah, it's house. Like, People bought it and turned it into a home. Yeah, just like That's what she crazy. was just saying about this place. Yeah. Somebody bought yeah, it. And- I, <laughs> yeah, I I can't imagine. I, I mean, after the things I experienced there, I just, I can't imagine right? that, <laughs> that anyone do that. 
I'd be interested to talk to the people who bought it. Hey, what's going on? I know what I, I so want to, I so want to go back and just kind of knock on the door and say, you know, something weird happened here. <laughs> and it was what? really was cool too. <laughs> it was really cool place too, because, um, they, I mean, you know, they got the whole parcel and the whole back of it was, was a cemetery and the cemetery actually had descendants of, um, Benjamin Franklin. Wow. Wow. Which is weird for being in Indiana, but, you know, I think yeah. there were some descendants that had, um, you know, had moved west and, you know, that's, that's the story that we were told. So. Wow. Well, that's that's, yeah, that is. <laughs> so what else you been on? Um, so, yeah, so we did Ghostville. Um, and so when Spirit Story, Story Box launched, um, we got interviewed by a, um, TV station in Louisville, Kentucky. So Louisville is only about a two hour drive from Indianapolis. And, uh, so they wanted, you know, to just kind of see us, you know, use spirit story box and, yeah. um, which is always kind of nerve wracking, you know, it's like, oh, your kid's got to go on stage and perform or, you know, everybody's <laughs> going to just think that, you know, that you're just like this sham and, um, and it has never disappointed us. Uh, so we met them at the, uh, Conrad Caldwell mansion, which is in the old part of Louisville. Louisville, the old town portion is just this beautiful area of these old Victorian homes. And, um, they do, they do a really nice ghost walk down there. And, um, and this mansion is, is absolutely beautiful. The mansion is being maintained by the, the descendants of, of the, the Conrads and the Caldwells. And it, it was rumored to be haunted. And, uh, and so we had the, the film crew follow us around and as we used spirit story box and we got, we got a lot of really good hits and then something happened that I had never experienced before. Um, I had the app open and instead of it, just, it, it spoke a lot of words that, that made a lot of sense. Like one of the things it said was Cooper and the, I believe it was the Caldwell, one of the early founders that built the home. He made his fortune in Cooperage making barrels. Oh, oh wow. Interesting. And, um, it, but my app opened, I had had it open, but it, it opened itself to the word history and started clicking on the words. And my whole screen was like jiggling and moving. And you could see the, almost like a, you know, it's a, it's a capacitive touch and something was literally touching the different words and moving my whole screen. And the, the cameraman had kind of walked away when this started happening to me. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm like, Oh my gosh. And so then he, you know, he came over and started filming and, and, and so he's like, you know, please, you know, like, tell us what happened. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, look at this. And it was still doing it. He, he got it on. Yeah. He got it on film. Wow. We need to see these. Yes. We got to watch these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, I will. I can try to find the link. It's it's you know, it's been quite a while. I think I don't know if that we may have actually captured the um, the the link to the the video. So, um, yeah, we were on there. And then um, there was a radio station out of uh, Cleveland that was they were using spirit story box um with a ghost team that they were with and then you know we were um we were on the phone with them so we did some of that um we got published in um a fate and fortune magazine and then another um spiritual publication in the UK oh wow story broke um we were on a morning uh drive time show with the kid cruise show out of Cincinnati and that was an absolute hoot once again, you know, they're, they're going to roast us, you know, cause you know, they're convinced that, you know, we're just these, these crazy paranormal investigators and, you know, <laughs> nobody's phone can talk to the dad. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they're a comedy team and, um, and, and the, you know, he, he's the star and then he's got a straight man. So, you know, he, he, he turned on spirit story box and let it run, you know, during the, the length of our interview and, um, you know, and his sidekick was, you know, like basically, you know, dissing on the app, you know, this is stupid, this is bogus. And it said maniacal laughter. <laughs> and then he got like really quiet. And, <laughs> you know, all this hilarity ensued and stuff. And, um, and it just, it just, it was just really a, an awful lot of fun. And I tell people, it's like, you know, you, you can joke, but that, that app has, you know, it, it has surprised me and, and almost kind of scared us sometimes. Oh, wow. Right. 
Now, I'm on your website. Was you on uh, uh, My Ghost Story? Uh, no, but Roger Pingleton was. Oh, okay. My ex. Right. Um, and, and, two of, and two of my former uh, teammates. It was um, Elizabeth Wynn and uh, Joe Faudry. Oh, okay. We, yeah, I had done a, um, I had done, um, I used to have a, a meetup group called Erie Indianapolis. And we had hooked up with some people. There was a dine out meet, uh, uh, meetup group and they wanted this, you know, they always go out to eat. So they said, well, we, we want to go take all our members. We want to go out to eat. We want to like do something fun. And I said, well, tell you what, you know, there's this, there's this inn that's haunted. It's, it's a bar, kind of like a dive bar. And I said, tell you what, you know, they do these programs and, you know, for one fixed fee, you know, they'll, they'll feed you guys dinner and, um, and I'll get up and talk a little bit about ghost hunting. And then I said, you know, we'll go in the basement and we'll do ghost hunt. And that's what we did. And I did not think that we would get activity. I thought, you know, we were running cameras and recording everything and I thought, you know, because the bar was, you know, was going full tilt and it was noisy and everything. Um, but even then, we we picked up a very clear, really loud uh, EVP down in the basement. And so it was very active. And then uh, after um, my group, they, they all left for the night and the team members, we kind of hung around and uh, were down in the basement. And um, it was uh, Elizabeth's son. He had, uh, unbeknownst to me, he had he had just popped over to um, to just see what his mom was doing, and so he was down there, and he was the one that got sort of possessed and attacked. Wow! And um, and yeah, Elizabeth saw it, and you know, she told me later. She said his eyes did not look like Stephen. They did not look like my son's eyes. And and Joe was standing right next to her, and Joe was a um, at the time he was a prison guard. And he said when he saw that look in that in his in her son's eyes, he said, I knew that that meant trouble. You know, he yeah. said that's that's when you really knew you were you were in for it. Mm-hmm. And um, and he he was really confused. We got him upstairs. He had scratch marks all over him. And then um, they were flown out to uh, L.A. to be on my ghost story. And uh, Roger had done all the all the tech and had captured all the the video of what happened so then they came to film the b-roll footage in indianapolis and so then they they filmed roger on on the scene you know recreating yeah uh, what all had happened and then um i had taken one of the exterior shots when i was walking my people around i always start my investigations i always try to get someplace during the daylight. So you can walk around, see what's around. I always take exterior shots of the whole building all the way around. And I got a picture of a face in the window, which they show on the show. And then um, Rick, one of the other investigators that was there, he had taken a picture inside and he captured this large black mass up in the corner of one of the rooms. And it was actually kind of almost blotting out the the TV that was hanging on the wall. Wow. So, um, That's crazy. yeah, that was, that was a really, um, that was a really interesting, uh, investigation that we thought it would just be a lark and, and all of a sudden it just, it really turned into being something. Yeah. And that's that same location that, um, they had been on, uh, some of the other ghost shows. I think it was paranormal 911. There was a, a group that had captured a lot of evidence there. At, at that, what was the name of the place? At that same um, gas, it was called Gaslight. The, uh, the gas. It was the Gaslight Inn, and, and they may actually have have um, have closed. Oh man! It was it was reported to be a, a Dillinger hunt, um, haunt, and there's like supposedly you know some bullet marks in the in the basement. The basement was really cool. It was all real stone, and right. I don't know if they, they were like you know running whiskey during Prohibition or or what the history was, but. Or just because, you know, so much had happened there, you know, sometimes all that energy just kind of, you know, slides down into the, into the basement of places. Yes. Right. Yeah, it sure does. That was really active. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So what do you have in the, in, in, in the works? What's what, coming up? Yeah. What, what is there for Psy Mines or is, are you just going to go a different direction? She's going to disappear well, um, again. Like. <laughs> well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get, uh, I'm, I'm really trying to work up um, on being a vlogger. 
um, right now I've, I've mostly been on, um, on TikTok and Facebook and, um, just, you know, documenting, you know, my travels and, and just exploring these places and, you know, just trying to find historical places that are beautiful and just trying to share them with people so that they realize that there's also, you know, a paranormal experience to be had there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would like to, I'd like to turn it into like a full-time vlog and you know maybe do some ebooks and and some things um i'm i'm home briefly i'm trying to plan out what my next trip is going to be um i was just at uh myrtle's plantation in uh outside of baton rouge yeah in new orleans i did um i, I spent the night there that was an amazing place very just just a beautiful beautiful bed and breakfast beautiful place yeah I'm, really i've have, never been there um, but i've definitely heard it was uh as pictures and stuff, it looks beautiful. Oh, go! Just go! Just Let's go! go it's, honey. It's a, <laughs> yeah, you just you just need to go. It's the 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 restaurant there is killer. Like you'll have a killer meal. They have like killer wines, and it's a beautiful place. You can stroll around. You know, look at the gardens, <laughs> wear your bug spray. <laughs> yes. I'm all from I Savannah, Georgia. I know about that. <laughs> yeah, and then and then just um yeah just <laughs> just book you know book the caretaker's cottage. And, um, you know, just see if you experience anything. I, I stayed in Caretaker's Cottage, which is the one that um, is famous for the one, you know, Ghost Hunters episode where the lamp supposedly moved. Right. Um, there are probably more haunted rooms within within the house. It's just, um, you know, you just got to really book those way ahead. Yes. And I can do the Anne Rice tours while we're there too, honey. There you go. There you go. It's looks like and, my so vacation's that's, that's, planned out. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah, I yeah, that's that's what I try to do is I try to just, you know, pick like a little circuit route or just pick some places that people may not be aware, you know, that they, they do have some paranormal history. Yeah, and um That sounds like fun. And just kinda, you know, show people that and say, you know, you just you might want to consider doing this. And um yeah, if you if you want any suggestions and you know, I'm happy to provide suggestions. Um, I've spent a lot of time um, doing, you know, I lived in Indiana for 35 years, just doing, you know, the whole Indiana, Kentucky, the whole bourbon trail. Yeah. There's some amazing, oh, I mean, that, those are some really amazing experiences too. Um, the Buffalo Trace Distillery, that they have a haunted brick house. They, they do a little ghost tour over there. So we're, what, we're taking notes. Yeah, she's writing everything down. <laughs> just message me all. <laughs> just, yeah, look look through my Facebook. I I have probably about you know sixty posts. I I still need to to do you know and get all my um get all my experiences up on there. But yes. So what about like um, are you going to have a Facebook page that people can go to and and see about your adventures and the different places you go and. Things like that. Um, right now, it's um, it's just on my personal page, Jill Weaver, and it's you know I it's not a private page; it's a public page. So whatever I have on there is is for everyone to see. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah awesome. just to, yeah, just just friend me, and um, and then if you're on TikTok, I'm uh, Jill underscore Weaver on TikTok. And there's a little notification bell if you want to click that, and then it'll just let you know if you know I'm someplace of interest, and you know I'll I'll go live. Um, I was at the Georgia Guidestones, and turned out I'm really glad I went because I was there probably a month before they <laughs> they got torn down. Yeah, yeah. Awesome sauce. yeah I, I I seen that I, just the other what was yeah. it, last week maybe. Yeah, I seen that. I was like, what happened here? <laughs> So yeah, a lot of a lot of controversy around those uh, those stones. Yeah, I, I visited them, and it's it's about a two hour drive outside of Atlanta. It's really out in the, it's really out in the middle of nowhere. And I got in there, and it was like pouring down rain. <laughs> I was trying to do my live because I really wanted people to see them and Aww. and that. So, but yeah, just trying to get you know these off the beaten path kind of places that I, that they just intrigue me. Yeah, so you know, me hopefully too. they're of interest to other people. That's awesome. You're living the life. I'm not going to lie. I'm well, girl crushing a little bit here. Like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll message me. We'll set something up. I'll come get you. <laughs> I, 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 I just uh, had reconnected with one of my childhood friends. I hadn't, oh my gosh, I hadn't seen her for, you know, 
35 years and um and uh you know I told her kind of you know what I was doing and she was you know she goes and she asks her husband she's like honey would you mind if if could I like go on a little vacation with Jill and he's like sure just you know make sure you come home and and um yeah I'm I'm trying to (laughs) just come back but um yeah, we, we had a great time. Um, we went up, I took her to uh, Bardstown, Kentucky, which I don't know if anyone's been there, but that's an amazing place full of history and really good bourbon. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we, <laughs> we stayed there in, um, in, in the most haunted room there. Um, it was Jesse James room. And then we went Jesse up, uh, we went up to Wisconsin and visited um, some friends of hers and uh, visited some caves and then, uh, well, you can't let we me. Went, you don't don't let us hang in. What happened in the Jesse James room there? Um, but did you well, get experiences? Yes, actually. Uh, so, but once again, you know, experiences are subtle. So you have to be you have to be paying attention. Well, we walked. Um, I booked the uh, the general's quarters, which is the only room in the. It's the historic upstairs of of the tavern. Now that is the world's oldest bourbon bar. A tavern, I think, goes back to 1786. Oh, okay. Big stone walls, you know, all kinds of history there, you know, as as a tavern and, and as an inn. And uh, so we stayed. I wanted to stay in the most historic portion of it, which I had stayed before. And it's still in room with uh, two twin beds. So when we came up and I first unlocked the, the door to our room, there was a little doll that was sitting on the floor right at staring at at the door basically right in front of one of the beds and I said well that's kind of odd and Mm, I picked her up (laughs) yeah it was kind of creepy and you know I had been there before but I had not kind of tumbled to the story of the doll and um you know so of course you know I photographed it and we um my friend who like I said her grandmother is a very famous psychic and you know wanted her to take over so she was kind of opening herself up a little bit and we had walked up the stairs to our room and she said, oh my gosh, I feel, I feel like my, I feel like I'm choking. And uh, we went downstairs and I said, you know, does the staff mess with people? I said, I found, I found the doll on the floor. And they said, um, no. And I, our staff does not put the doll on the floor. She lives on, you know, this one little particular ledge in the room. Yeah. And so they were all like looking at each other going, you know, yeah, the, the doll was on the floor. <laughs> oh, wow. And they said that, you know, this doll uh, uh, does that. She kind of moves around and they felt that um, she was the embodiment of of some little girls that had passed away in the room. Oh. So the story was, is that there was a girl that had fallen on the stairs and died, the same stairs that we had come up. And they thought that she was the one that... Um, was playing with the doll or actually inhabiting the doll. Now we did find out later that there was a 15 year old girl who hung herself in that, in that room. Ooh. And I think that that's what my friend was picking up on. Cause she kept saying, no, this is more, you know, like neck. And you know, we were saying, yeah, was it like a broken neck? Like, was she the one that fell on the stairs? And she said, no, I feel more like a choking sensation. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That and, happened to um, me at was, Waverly in the terminal rooms. I felt like I was suffocating, you know, like I just could not get a breath. It was terrible. I had to leave. So, that I mean, yeah. that's probably exactly what it feels like to yeah. have tuberculosis. Yeah. It would be horrible. Oh, what a horrible way to die. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, we had a few experiences. Um, I let... Uh, I let the monitors, I just let it run all night. And, um, and, you know, people were, were reporting to us. We got some REM pod hits and people were hearing like breathing. Um, something spoke my name apparently during the middle of the night, real close to one of the, the microphones. Oh, when I, was just, I, sl- I slept through, I slept through that part. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to wake you up. Yes. <laughs> So, well, that's awesome. I mean, it sounds like you've had one heck of a, uh, <laughs> a life. Yeah. Story. Man, she's living the oh, life. She's doing well, exactly thank what you. I I'm not. Be I'm doing. not done yet. I am not done yet. <laughs> I have, there's whole parts of the country I haven't explored yet. Hey, so, you go, girl. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. Uh, Gettysburg is definitely on my list. Yeah, it's definitely on our list Gettysburg. Too. Yes, I think they're doing something in October. Somebody. Can't remember who said that to me, but 
Somebody that lives close to us wants us to go to Gettysburg in October. Oh. One of our friends. Well, yeah. <laughs> Might have to. <laughs> I'll take the podcast on the road. Yes. <laughs> we could do that. See, it's the per- it's the perfect portable business. There you, know? you go. <laughs> So we don't know, make do, a dime. Do some of this. <laughs> do, do some of this. Do, do some of this live. You know, on the on the spot reporting. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, see that now. Yeah, you, so, now you're getting the wheels turning yeah, over here. I'm She's always, gonna be okay, like. So, like I said, just message me. I'll pick you up. I'll leave you wherever. You know, and and. But, you know, that's, that's what I've been doing. I, I've been, you know, trying to connect with, you know, friends old and new and, you know, I'll, you know, say I'm going to be somewhere and, you know, meet up with one of my friends and, you know, have a little adventure and. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's but, awesome. Um, that is awesome. Yeah. Well, I appreciate yeah. you coming and talking to us at such short notice. This has been wonderful. Yes. Thank you very much. It's been. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Yeah. It, we, we love hearing about your, your experiences and your adventures and, and, uh, I'm actually looking forward to talking to you again. Yeah, me too. For sure. Oh, I would love that. You guys are so fun. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely see that in the future. And we hope that, uh, that everything you have going on, just keeps getting better and better and better and we we're looking forward to to reading about your experiences and seeing all these different places you go to exactly and i'm looking Great. forward Thank to you the so girl much. road trip <laughs> <laughs> okay <All right. laughs> we'll keep in touch for sure all right we will, we will make it happen okay. right. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> all right thank you jill so much for everything i hope you have a wonderful evening great thanks all right. good night thank all right. you good night, good night. Hey, thanks for tuning in with us tonight, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and follow to receive notifications when new content from Paranormally Podcast is made available. If you believe you have something paranormal happening in your home or business, or you believe you may have witnessed a UFO or UAP, please send us your story, your photos, videos, questions, suggestions, and your comments to paranormallypodcast at gmail.com. You can also visit us at www.paranomalypodcast.com for more content and information, including all our social links. Hey, thanks again for watching and listening, and I hope that you tune in for next week's episode of Paranomaly. Hey, a word of caution. Paranomaly Podcast and its affiliates or hosts do not verify or check the validity of any person, team, or its members. Paranomaly Podcast highly advises that you proceed with caution when contacting any person or team before allowing them and having them into your home or business. A legit paranormal research and investigation team will never charge you a fee to investigate your home or business. They do, however... Accept donations to help further the research and investigations if you so choose to do so. All right. Thanks, everybody.